one more area. How bad could it be? <laughs> hey everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Been recording here for about six hours now. Today alone. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time we did the Spirit Crucible Alpus, the Cliffs of Moratha, and the Land of Moratha all in one go. This time, it's the World Tree. Up we go. There's a surprising number of things still left to do. New Game Plus has its own post game, so even if we reach Elysium this time, it's not gonna be the end of things. No sorry, Bob. So, starting off, as we get close to the World Tree, up at Mega Float Base, the place that I made fun of all that time ago, if you would like to come into view. Yep, another one. After this cutscene. Nope, nope, nope. Turn around, Mr. Dromark. You have missed something. With a snoot like that, I wouldn't think you could miss anything. Traveling bar. Welcome, welcome. Have been waiting here for day to come for hearing a friend's adventure stories. Friends will not disappoint, yes. Uh, Master Strike Mod for 500,000 experience points. I already got one of these. Don't need it. How rude. Heart of Nopon is full of sad. He doesn't have an instrument, so I assume he just sings. How many ether crystals am I sitting on? 61,000. I'll go ahead and pop that open. Get it. QT does not have these either. Not that she'll help out that much. Anything we could use to strengthen her smash art's good. And we already have all the slots open on Poppy Alpha. I'm thinking from here, probably going to go for the energy conversion. So we have spots to actually, we have a, the ability to actually equip stuff to these. Fast Blade Switch we definitely want for uh, driver combo spamming. Affinity Max Evade is good. Affinity Max Accuracy will be great when fighting higher leveled enemies. Challenger as well. A lot of battles where we care about our equipment are going to be against enemies that are higher leveled than Tora. Wow, that ate up a lot of juice. Didn't think I'd have to do this again so soon. Uh, maybe one more. It's getting expensive. I'm already feeling the crunch. I'll take an outdoor attack up three. I don't have anything for this last slot. Elemental absorbs can be right for the specific challenges. I think maybe I'll just go Affinity Max Barrier 1 just for a little bit of defense worked in there somewhere. I didn't know you could do this, but pressing Y shows the full readout of everything that is equipped to that poppy form if you want to copy it. It's way easier than panning over everything and making you pause. Wish I knew this sooner. Always learning new things. You never stop growing. Correction. I will trade for the Master Strike mod. Go on, Nia. Give it to him. Okay, this is getting kind of weird. I just think about going into someone's brain and pulling the memories out of it and trading it in for stuff, and it's my mental image of this and always has been. Uh, I want to give that to Poppy QT. I need more energy. There it goes. The Master Strike mod giving Tora additional dexterity and just uh, gives his role um, more stuff in general from being an attacker. I think that could help out Cutie Pie quite a bit by just having that on QT. Cutie is hardly ever used unless we need a specific art, in which case she'll evade an attack or do a smash, nothing else. That was a Before the climb gets started, go. there's a few places around the world that I'd like to go check out. And sure, we can have Dromark <laughs> carry us around a little bit. I feel like Dromark's definitely been uh, taking some L's, as the children say. Uh, I've been quite nasty to him because he's just not that good in battle. I've been told that Tataka has something interesting to say. Uh, not look like Tataka was not slacking off, just resting wings, really truly. Sumpkins bearing so much fruit this year, it is uh, getting too hard to keep up with the harvest. At this rate, valuable Sumpkins are going to get bruised and not able to sell on market. If only Tataka had more helping hands, we've already seen this. Talk to him again. Tataka make discovery of century! Two in same decade! Tataka been watching Driver Scout carefully and finally noticed something. When Blade resonate with Driver, very rare chance to unlock crazy strong hidden power! Big possibility of unbelievable power! Stronger than the Aegis! Stronger than Jewel of Morardain! It even looked like normal Blade from distance, but from it, Tataka sense amazing potential! 
So drivers not give up on dream. And someday we'll meet Best Blade with power beyond compare. Poppy is dancing, hearing that you're talking about them. Uh, I believe that is referring to Cosmos, who uh, did not have any strong emotions one way or the other about being bragged about. First off, making love source. It's time to start making some love sources again, as Rex is the master driver and can have any three blades he wants. This is an important quest to be doing a new game plus with all these new blades, and the fact that Rex no longer has to share these love sources with Pyra and Master Pawn rest sufficiently? Oh no! So Rex, romance those bad guys like no one else can. Seriously, you had amazing powers key. of persuasion to at least get them to listen to you for a few seconds this entire adventure. Rick. You're the one that I trust to be able to handle this. Love source! Having this makes me real happy. Such a pleasant smell. Ah, I think you're getting through to Perdido. Mm. Ah. Oh. Don't. Ascending slowly to greatness. Ouch, slowly is right. Oh, God, I'm going to need to do a lot of these. A vital skill. Reaching for Dito in Dito. We want to go stay at Full Merry Inn with Agate in the party. Agate, Pyra, Nia, Tora, Morag, Poppy, Alpha, Bridget, Pandoria, and Zeke to be exact. A lot of prerequisites are now more specific than they were before, thanks to New Game Plus allowing some blades to be off on Merc missions when they would otherwise never be out of the party. We're playing Agate's Quest again as it changes in New Game Plus, something that I've talked about a long time ago. Nia, you need to stop sitting like that. You might look like a cat, but you ain't one. You can't be putting that stuff on display. In this quest are all sorts of minerals that can be collected. 21 spots to mine, many of them are useless, and some are even impossible to complete on a first playthrough because you can't get her prospecting high leveled enough before that part of the quest would be over. The first place that we're going is Temperantia, the central plain up to the Aegis Hammer. It's hammer time! There's definitely something here. I'm sure of it found something. Hmm, I don't think I've seen one like that before. Agreed. I think it's something rare. Uh, let's get it to Missy Missy and to appraise it. Strange mineral. Hey, look what I found. Wee adventure! You can't not love that. The Isle of Sleeping Remains in Lefteria is where one of the minerals, well, remains. We have to go inside of the shell and deal with the malign miasma to get to it. it is There's definitely something here. I'm sure of it. I found something. Don't think I've seen that before, yada yada yada. There's definitely something here. Second floor sure. of the Wonderspring Plaza Ruins in Spirit Crucible Elpis. The Merc Group came back. Can't wait to fight again. This power will help me protect you. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes, it will. She has left is one more and her battle skills are all done. I'd like to learn more about salvaging. You, on the other hand, need to buck up your ideals. Hey, look at that! Where's this power coming from? All of her skills done. Ah. I still want to know more. Something awakes within me. <laughs> Polished to a high shine. 
Twin Trunks Hill in Gormot. This was the first one that I demonstrated when we did her quest in the first There's place. Definitely something Requiring here. prospecting sure level three despite disappearing after you get that skill. This is the first one that's truly impossible with that new game plus. The others are just unlikely. West of Great Pillar Passage in Tantal. What's he doing here. standing on the I'm rock? Sure of it. I'm guessing they reused the animation in all of these spots and Zeke just happened to be on top of a rock in the spot they told him to stand in, usually. One by one, so we can see what Missy Missy has to say. All right, time to see what we have here. Hmm, this Hemia stone. Uh, is mineral discovered by Diggy Diggy? Apparently is it named after girlfriend of Diggy Diggy, name of Himahi. Me just hope Diggy Diggy not later break up with Himahi and regret naming decision. Oh, been there, done that. Uh, no mineral this time, uh, but if friends find any more, uh, more mineral for appraising, please do feel free to bring. Number two. Crystal Dome, almost said Chrome Dome. Ah yes, this one called Crystal Dome. Very delicate formation, easy to break, requires special care when excavating. Dome contains reservoir of water with many small crystal fragments. Shake dome and it look like snowing. Good for selling, but also good for display on desk of mantelpiece. So no new mineral this time. Lightning Pearl. Meh -meh, this lightning pearl. Also known as Titan Tear, because only produced when lightning strikes certain jellyfish-shaped titans. We know where this one's from. Freshly made lightning pearl is too sparkly to touch for first few days. So if friends find one in nature, take care with picking up. So, no new mineral this time. Dark Sight. This is the super rare one that can't be found anywhere else. Dark Sight, quite rare jewel, only found glowing in very soft place. I see why it's quite rare is popular for use as charm to ward off evil spirits. So no new mineral this time. And last up, Dusky Pearl. Is interesting mineral that change color depending on environment. This one very black, so must have come from Temperantia. It's kind of cool how much little lore is packed into this quest, like the Titan's Tear being the name of it because it's when uh, the jellyfish titans are struck by lightning because they have sand on them and that's how glass is created. That's cool stuff. I'm not gonna be completing this quest, that's everything that we didn't see in it. What, they turn their faces when I said it like they're judging me or something? What, Nia, you can't just do that to me, I've been here. I've been here for five hours, I have not gone for food. Okay, that's a lie, I did eat just before this, I took a break though, but still, it was fried food and I don't feel very full and May I regret my decision. Already? It is Whose fault day. is that? Uh, so, I didn't know this, because I am not a mineralogist, uh, but the stone that Agate discovers at the end of this quest is actually Agate. The thing that she names Agate is Agate in our world as well, it's accurate. Hi, Aegean. You're not a real story blade, but lots of real story blades can now appear in Garfont Village. Uh, blades like Bridget or Dromark. I don't know if all of them can. Images on them are quite scarce, and I couldn't get a lot of them to spawn on my own. Here's the ones that I know for a fact can happen. Thank you to everyone who sent in pictures of these. That's all the little side things. Up the world tree we go! Sadly, on the way up, there won't be much opportunity for high-level fighting. Not a lot of strong enemies around these parts that we can't take out easily. But I am not a selfish man. We won't get to fight using a new blade today, but we will be seeing some new things with our Treasure blades today. Quiet. You and me against the world, Dromark. I need to use you on Rex in order to do this. First of all... <laughs> He was talking through the horn. Master Tank Mod for 500,000 bonus experience. That sounds like pie that I want a piece of. <laughs> Nia, let your life be good for something. Hey, I didn't say it. Takahashi did. I want that for Poppy Alpha, no duh. The Master Tank mod allows for a particularly cool setup with Poppy Alpha. I'll be right back. Tora, you can 
juice your own blood into Poppy so that Nia doesn't have to for once. Energy converter up. Still can't do it. Energy converter up. Yes, can do it. The Master Tank mod allows for a particular setup that is only possible with Poppy Alpha. We'll get to this in a little while, but I'm excited to talk about it, and I needed to get be able to get to this before I could even think about doing it. Careful observation is the best way to learn about things. This looks so much more cursed when it's a ladder. I've been asked to perform Dromark's Level 4 Special on Rex and compare it to Dromark's Level 4 Special on Nia. Here those two are, side by side against the same enemy. We all know Morag's level 4 special. Iconic as hell. It's so damn cool, but it's so reliant on Morag being there. So what about Rex? Ha! It's pretty much the same, they just skip the cool posing side by side because Rex is too short. Pandoria? Whoa, that is cool! Rex doesn't do the whole Eye of Shining Justice thing that Zeke does, so it's not quite as good, but I don't know, he may, he may do with what he had. And has a spike through his head right now. Remember Pandoria's terrible skill that makes her auto attack speed faster when they could have just given her that in the first place? It turns out Rex has considerably slower auto attacks with her than Zeke. It's not that the skill isn't programmed into him, it is. It's just that Rex is naturally less good at swinging her weapon around. You can see in this comparison that they both start auto attacking at the same time, yet Zeke reaches the end of the combo way faster. Yet another way Pandoria underwhelms. Don't use her on Rex. And there's actually one more blade we're doing a Comparexin for. Through the power of naughtiness, it's Sever Special between Rex and Malox. I only have this footage thanks to Ashamoth on Twitter. Thanks for selling your soul to get it. Sever's level 3 with Malox is interesting as it inflicts the taunt status, making it the only way that any member of the party can ever do this. On your head! I check in on this probably once per area, and I have to know how close we are. 104 to go. <laughs> this might be the first thing that I have to farm. I've been doing blade combos along the way wherever possible, just to see if it's doable without having to farm it. A new strategy. Oh, my muscles throb. Now that Indol's become a hostile power, did you notice the pause menu updated with a new titan every single time? You probably did. I didn't want to mention it just so you could notice it for yourself. But you see how all the titans are moving toward the world tree? It's depicting the great big war that Amalthus causes at the end of the story. Well, except for Gramps, he's not exactly alive, but hey, that's one little semantic in this whole thing. Everyone else is present. And hey, if we go over to Expansion Pass, it's exactly as it is in the main story. If I can't see Gramps, he's not there. So 21 more. Oh no. Oh no, honey, I broke the Torah, no. I can still pause. Oh God, do I risk saving? Uh. Shoot, uh... What if I swap out Tora for another character? No. Oh no. Oh no, when did I last save? When did I last save? I've been trying to save frequently. I don't know where the last time I did it was though. Uh... Is there... Rex? Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm saving right now, and I'm clearing the cache by restarting the game. Okay, I last saved 30 minutes ago. That wouldn't have been that bad. 
I've never seen that glitch happen before. I've had crashes happen on... I was sent back to the start of the floor when I was over there. I... So I chose to fight the enemies over here just to see if I could do a blade combo on them. There was a big giant Garolf Sovereign, in the giant robot thing. I fought that and then I paused because I realized Telos wasn't in the party and I was trying to get her chain attack counter up as well. Uh, so I went and I put in Telos and then that happened and then when I switched back to Rex, it moved me back to the start of the floor. Never seen that. Oh right, I was gonna clear the cache. <laughs> For the record, I've been here playing for seven hours as of this point. So that's how long it took for this game to start having issues. Just because I mentioned the whole memory leak thing and that you should be aware of it. This actually ties in perfectly to what I was going to say next. Adenine spends the rest of her life in this room, yes? You could argue that that means that if Adenine is not called into the final battle, she canonically dies in the end. Some arguments could be made. Uh, the world tree definitely does stay standing, thanks to Professor Klaus intervening. It's not to say that necessarily she did die, just that it possibly happened. The world tree did start its collapse, so it's kind of... So I, I kind of am 50-50 on whether or not she actually dies in the end. I could see it going either way. I wouldn't say that either way is necessarily canon. Okay, what is it with swapping in the party that's having trouble? The game had to stop and think there for a second, and it startled me. New technical manual inside of this chest on the very top of the lower level. Halfway up the world tree is a chapter break. These chapters get so short near the end. Reeze! Why don't you tell me something side splitting? Oh, Mithra, you've put the pressure on them and it's impossible to be funny. Yeah, I don't like that people are like, hey, tell me a joke, because you can never do it on the spot. Oh, hi, perfect timing. I want to give you something. Huh? Look, our very first actual find of salvagers. I want you to have it. No idea what it is, but I'll bet you find a use for it somehow. A Delta Vessel. That's the conclusion to these Kids' lives. They just turned into dust in the wind as soon as they gave us that gift. Uh, this is the conclusion of their character arc, where they've actually become full-fledged salvagers now. Well, fledgling salvagers. Full-fledgling salvagers. Saying something new? We decided together that we'd make uh, our first thing salvage a present to you guys. For reals? If it weren't for you guys, we'd never have these sal gotten these salvager jobs at all. We'll work hard to repay our debts, so you can count on that. Aww. Rudvik, in front of the Mymoma Playhouse. My granddad said he met King Eulogiminus once, a long time ago. You've heard of him, right? The King of Tantal? How remarkable. <laughs> Just still unimpressed about that crap he pulled the first time. Anyway, it was a few decades ago. The king was still young and free, out traveling the world. My granddad asked him what he thought of Uriah. He said he was a little disappointed with the lack of salvaging. Seems the king was a bit of a salvager freak back in the day. Yeah, he's hoarded quite a treasure hoard from what I hear. It's your hint to go talk to him and get that endgame quest where uh, you become the Salvager King. Also, how old is Eulogiminus if this super freaking old guy's granddad knew him? What, is it that like six generations? At the start of chapter nine, the refugees have not set up all their tents yet. They're just merely being greeted by the locals. Salmon is one such person who's come here to do that. Today's the greatest day. Amalthus is blowing up more Ardane. Who could have predicted the world would come to this? But it's times like this that we need to help each other out more than ever. That's why I came here. For some reason, even the Imperial Army are listening to what I have, willing to listen to what I have to say. I'm glad I can be of help to everyone. Well, I'll be here. I'll make sure of it. So you can focus on saving all rest, eh? We talked to him and heard this line earlier. We just didn't do it at this point in time and see all of the build up to that where he gets a character arc. And I'm pretty sure I know what Malode has to say. Yep, him and Tadazo are butt buddies, just like we heard before when I was surprised at the end of the game not knowing that he had a character arc. Poppy, you're up. Poppy got it. During this cutscene, the costumes are gotten wrong. As a way of cutting down on load times, the monitor that Amalthus is watching all this unfold through is a pre-rendered cutscene. 
Mithra does not look like that in the present moment. Rex and the Aegis? What are they doing? Unless... Open fire! Don't let them near! Takahashi said one of their goals for this game was getting rid of loading screens altogether. And they got really damn close. I'm impressed by how optimized this is with how you can swivel the camera around and freely go anywhere you want. And how long you could potentially play this without having to load even a single time. And skip travel within the same Titan is quick. It's only really when transitioning to another Titan that it's not. Didn't we have a branching story path or something that I chose the other option for? Well, let's get into the first of those changes. One. In battle, whenever Numa is activated, Rex will call out whichever name the player decided, either Pyra or Mithra. Second, he does the same in cutscenes. Ah! Mithra! Rex! Pyra! Rex! There's another bigger change this affects later. For the curious types, every affected cutscene has a Pyra or Mithra version selectable from the events theater without needing to replay the game. Mikhail? It's Rex, right? Yeah. Have you found your answer? I have, and it's pretty spectacular. I see. Well then, I'll leave Jin to you. Now go. Get after him already. Tell him your answer. Hmm. Amalthus. Time to end this. Forgive us, Jin. We're going on ahead. <gasps> Mikhail! Indol, it's... it's sinking. Never thought I'd see the day when Torna, of all people, would be saving our hides. Mikhail. We can't let his effort go to waste. You're right. Let's go after Jin. I have to have a word with him about the answer I found. Rex, shut up. We're going exploring instead. It is time for a second branching story path. If you've not seen this, oh boy. We want to skip travel to the Mega Float base at the bottom of the world tree. Keep a close eye out for trouble. Where do we go from here? There's someone there. That is not there unless it's New Game Plus. Hey! How you doing? What the Did you think I was dead? Even I thought I was dead. Petroka told me not to die. She said she wanted to be the one to kill me. I couldn't just let myself die after an order like that. Honestly, I'd be scared of the consequences. Well, you have to let me come along and take a look at the answer that you found. Can I? I can. Yeah! Mikhail will be engaged by whichever character talks to him. However, Tora cannot engage him. Womp womp. He just turns around in disappointment. Mikhail! <laughs> K 
can join our party. He's a good choice on either Rex or Morag. I would probably say more so Morag than Rex because he does well when paired up with Mithra. But let's say that you don't do that. Let's say that you talked to him with Zeke and didn't mean to. If Mikhail is released, he will reappear in this place. I haven't seen this noted in too many places, but Mikhail is a poor man's overdrive. He can't be freely engaged to any driver that he wants. Uh, if I were to say go into Morag's thing, uh, his he's not there. If I were, however, to go into Zeke's menu and disengage him, and then, oh no, I have to go to Manage Blades, and then release him. So I'll travel alone, no big. Yikes, poor guy. We can talk to him again and engage him on whoever we like. No progress in his affinity chart or trust lost. We won't be able to go over his full capabilities. Also, hardy, hardy, hard, Uh, So, Mikhail's interesting. Unlike the other blades where you get a non-canon copy of them that goes along with you on your travels, in New Game Plus, the story differs and he is allowed to live surviving the fall down into Moritha. Whereas anywhere else, he's just missing an action, presumably never to be heard from again. As far as I'm aware, this is not the canon way that it goes, but until they make another game, there's not really a way of knowing that now, is there? He is a Blade Eater, and there's all sorts of theories going around that the next game in the series is going to involve the long-lived characters and stuff. He could be there and prove that New Game Plus is canon, or we could just not see him and it could be left ambiguous. Who knows? You do, if you're watching this a few years in the future. And whatever the answer is, I bet you just chuckled at me, didn't you? Skywalk has one more traveling bard for us. I am Nopon who traveled world of Ulras looking for adventures, th adventure stories that thrill. Meeting here mean friends have uh, had uh, great fun, fun adventures on way, if that's what you want to call it. My friend just almost died. Please to let here. Master Evasion Mod for 500,000 experience points. Me feeling a lot of regret right now. If friends change mind, uh, I happy to hear telling of stories later also. We'll wait here patiently, meh. Blade combo, third stage. As much as I'd love to use Mikhail in some legit fights, there isn't sufficient time to go over his capabilities and show off what makes him good, so that'll be saved for another time. I'd like to learn more about salvaging. Life isn't all gloom and doom. Instead, we'll send him away on a merc mission. I kind of like downtime. Oh, that hits me in the heart, what your merc group is called. Things are going to change around here. You gotta do what you gotta do. Have fun, chaps. Mikhail was that character for me. You know the one that you don't like at all for the longest time, and then... After the whole story sits with you for a little bit, you end up just loving. He was that for me, the way that he goes down smiling in the face of death at the very person that he hates the most. I uh, he's so cool. <laughs> uh, I like this possible future that he gets to live and gets to come with us and kind of turn sides. It's neat. It's really neat. Amalthus is a pretty ineffective bad guy when you think about it. Don't get me wrong, he is responsible for Blades essentially being enslaved and used for wars. He's a reason for the land shortage due to taking all those core crystals for his own body. I just mean for our group personally. And it's also fine because there's plenty of effective bad guys in the story. You need look no further than Jin and Malos just to name a few. But when it comes to our specific group, if it weren't for Amalthus, Zeke would be dead. We would have never gone to Tantal and if thus chosen to help them instead of Amalthus. At his summit with Emperor and Isle and Queen Rakura prevented a war and caused Rakura to see more Ardain in a new light that none of her predecessors had. Amalthus united the world, just not under himself like he wanted. Him causing the land crisis was also what made Rex seek Elysium, and he was the one who actually pulled it off when Amalthus himself went there seeking answers and found nothing. It seems as though, perhaps, at one point earlier in development, 
Nexus Force and uh, Union Sword were supposed to unlock sooner. They actually unlock during this battle against Amalthus. I can't prove that on a new file. Uh, you're just gonna have to take my word for it because they start out unlocked in New Game Plus. But they do unlock in this fight, even though the tutorial comes up after the fight. I think it's possible that they wanted to introduce that mecha those mechanics in this one, but they realized that you might not have the right uh, blades engaged for it. You need to have Blade Nia in order for that to happen. It also might just break the pace from the cutscene a little much, so they moved the tutorial to just after the fight, shortly after it unlocks, and then forgot to change the actual point of unlocking. This would explain why they teach you about it, and then you proceed to have no opportunity to use it for about an hour of gameplay afterward, which did always bother me. As soon as I learned about that special attack, I wanted to use it, but it wasn't until Ion that I got the chance. Obviously, I can't know that. It could just be a simple mistake where they put it one event flag too early or something, but I like to think that maybe the complaint that I had with it had a reason. If Zeke is present in the fight against Amalthus, he will occasionally say, Zeke, have you two been blinded by falsehoods? Bringing up their camaraderie now that they're fighting. The beginning of this video was cut off in the first run. The title, final chapter, and thus Boy Met Girl was left out of the original video due to an unfortunate glitch. Nothing else was wrong with the video, everything else was fine, so it wasn't caught. Just thought I'd tell you, that does come up. Director, the conduit's authorization has failed. How come? We're locked out by Professor Klaus. Everyone's reaction. <laughs> I had some people saying that Infernal Goldo is not Galea. And come on, they reuse assets all the time. Just because they reuse the same human model does not mean that they're the same person. They probably just reused whatever ID card texture that they had made, right? Uh-uh. Klaus and Galea both use unique ID card textures. I think it was very intentional that they reused hers. Time for my curtain call. <laughs> you just died! <laughs> What are you doing? No shame in being an extra. Aww. My confidence surges. Enemies beware. Yeah, nothing special. You better report in then. This is the Monado's power. That brings the climb up the world tree to an end. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. There's surprisingly much to do and much ado about Elysium. Adieu, see you guys then.